with roster cuts looming over every NFL team, let's talk about eight players that the Jets can go pick up that are on bubbles on their current rosters who might be able to help the Jets win games right now. No huddle, Wilson, end zone, caught, touchdown, Elijah Moore! What is going on, guys? Welcome back to Talking Jets with Tigo. My name is Tigo, and before we hop into today's video, some quick reminders. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, share the video with all your friends, hit the notification button. It really helps the channel grow and lets you get notified whenever new uh, videos drop. If you don't know, I write for a website called Stadium Ramp. Uh, I write for their Jets publication. It's called The Jets Joint. So head over there if you want to hear my opinions in written form. I'm doing a recap on the Jets-Giants game. Should be up sometime today. So keep your ears open for that. I will post it on the community channel when that goes live as well. But let's hop into today's video. So it's naive of us to expect that the 53-man roster that we're going to see on Tuesday is going to be filled with just players that came and practiced with the New York Jets. The expectation is that Joe Douglas and his staff have been out there scouting teams and scouting their situations to see players that might get cut or players that are on the roster bubble that we can go out and possibly trade for pennies on the dollar to get good and solid play for this New York Jets team. I want to talk about eight players that are currently on the roster bubble on their current teams that we can go get after they get cut or possibly go trade a seventh or a sixth round pick for um, to guarantee that they come to this team. So let's hop right in into it. I th focused my search on the three positions that I feel are the weakest on the New York Jets. So those three positions go offensive tackle, defensive interior, and safety. And so let's start on the offensive side of the ball with tackles. And a name that you've probably heard a bunch, and it is a guy that's on the, on the outs looking in, is Andre Dillard, tackle for the Philadelphia Eagles. Andre Dillard, who performed adequately last year for the Eagles, has suffered with some injuries, but ultimately is losing his job to a offensive, an elite offensive left tackle and an elite offensive right tackle. Mylotta and Johnson for the Eagles are really, really good. And so ultimately, there doesn't seem to be a starting spot for Andre Dillard. What does that mean for other teams in the NFL? Well, it means that you should be able to get in there and you should be able to trade for a guy who's on the outs. The Eagles might be willing to part ways with Andre Dillard for some assets, and especially with the wide receiver room in Philadelphia being kind of a one-headed monster in A.J. Brown. Don't come at me, people who believe in Devontae Smith. I don't. Uh, Jalen Rieger on the way out and just that wide receiver broom being kind of weak. We have an abundance of good players on wide re at wide receiver. That might be something that we can get going. Denzel Mims, maybe. Um, Calvin Jackson, Jeff Smith. I, I don't know, but there might be something there where the Eagles look at the Jets. And because we had joint practice, no, we did not have joint practice with them. But because we were able to play them in the preseason, they were able to get a good look at those players. It might facilitate a trade, or we can keep our uh, hopes up that they cut a guy like Andre Dillard, but I doubt they cut him. I think he's more on the trade block, and ultimately, if we want him to be our backup tackle um, alongside of Max Mitchell, we're going to have to trade for him, and I wouldn't be mad if we did that. Now, another tackle that is on the outs with this current team is Isaiah Wynn with the New England Patriots. Uh, Isaiah Wynn was the starting uh, left tackle for the New England Patriots last year. And uh, with the addition of Brown, um, uh, Trent Brown being the left tackle there, Wynn being the right tackle, not the addition of Brown, Brown was there already, but 
with Wynn coming in, it seems like Wynn is going to lose his job at right tackle to some of the other players that can also play guard out there. Um, on Wen Wu has looked really good at right tackle when he's been asked to play right tackle. Um, Pajuste has played right tackle and looked good when asked to play uh, right tackle. And so you might look at the New England Patriots who might be willing to part with Isaiah Wynn um, early because they have their answer at right tackle and left tackle. And Isaiah Wynn can't really bump inside to play guard because the guards that are there are ultimately better than him as well. Isaiah Wynn is relatively young at just 26 years old. So we would be getting a tackle with a lot of upside really, really young. But because this is an inter-division trade, we might have to pay a Jets tax to go get a guy like this. And so even though I think he has a higher upside than a guy like Andre Dillard. Um, because he's younger and just because I think he's like a little bit better at the position, you might not go with a guy like Isaiah Wynn just because of the fact he is inside your own division and you would ultimately end up paying that division tax. Next guy, and a lot of people have talked about this guy, and your beliefs on him have to be yours and yours alone, but that's Alex Leatherwood, offensive tackle with the uh, Las Vegas Raiders. Now, he was a first-round 2021 uh, overall. He was a the 17th overall pick in the 2021 draft. It was their first pick for uh, Las Vegas there. The staff that drafted him is no longer there in Las Vegas, and... As a lot of people say and a lot of people believe, and I agree with this, Alex Leatherwood was overdrafted. He should not have gone that high. I had a second round grade on him when I had him. He needed time to develop. And coming into the New York Jets where he would be a backup tackle, ultimately he would also be behind Max Mitchell. But bringing in a guy like Alex Leatherwood brings in another young offensive tackle to really compete for that starting tackle job in a couple of years. A good thing would be that if we were to trade for Alex Leatherwood, who could be had for really, really cheap, you could probably get him for a conditional seventh round pick in my eyes, is a guy that can come in, be your backup tackle, uh, and then have a situation where hopefully Dwayne Brown and George Fant are healthy all 17 games. And next year, you can seriously go into camp with a competition of Alex Leatherwood, Makai Becton, who's going to come back, and we're probably not going to take his fifth-year option, but that is a competition to have there, and Max Mitchell all competing for that right tackle spot. And hopefully, and I've talked about this before, you would see... Uh, us go out and get Orlando Brown to be our left tackle of the future, or you draft a guy in the first round to be your left tackle of the future, and these three guys, Mekhi Becton, Max Mitchell, Alex Leatherwood, can all compete for that right tackle spot, and in one summer, you can kind of, one year, you can kind of fix your problem at tackle for the next couple of years with a lot of really, really young, high upside talent. I'm really in favor for going out and getting Alex Leatherwood. I still think that the potential is there and he might just need a change of scenery and a coaching staff that actually believes in him and gives him time to develop. And the fact that he would be going up against really, really good edge rushers. Our twos are ones on like a lot of teams. When you look at the edge rushers, Jermaine Johnson, Michael Clemens, uh, Jacob Martin, Bryce Huff, Jabari Zuniga. Like these are all really, really good edge rushers that he would face constantly. And I really like our offensive line coach. I think he's one of the better ones in the NFL. So Alex Leatherwood, in my mind, makes a lot of sense. And this is the one that I really, really want to happen because he's so young and because he's just on the outs on his team for for no reason. Well, I, he, it is for a reason, but he was overdrafted. It's not his fault. Right, now let's move into the defensive interior. And there's really three guys that I want to talk about. All seem to be on outs in their team. They're all kind of cut candidates or guys that we can go uh, trade for, uh, possibly. Uh, number one is Kalen Saunders, defensive interior for the Kansas City uh, Chiefs. Uh, he's a guy, and a lot of these guys that seem to be on the out seem to be these tweeners. None of them are really, really excellent run defenders, which is 
what we might want to get. But Kalen Saunders is the closest person that I found that was kind of on the outs that could be a run defender. At 26 years and six foot, 325 pounds, the former third round pick in 20, a third, yeah, former third round pick in 2019 seems to be on the outs in a position group in Kansas City that has a lot of depth in the defensive interior. And it's not a matter of being abysmal or horrible play last year or anything like that or or even bad play in the preseason this year. It's just that it's a crowded room in Kansas City and he might be on the way out. But if we're talking about a uh, interior... Um, player that I think would be a really, really good pickup for for the Jets would be Taylor Stallworth, um, the defensive interior who's currently with the Kansas City Chiefs, but most recently played in Indianapolis. Now, he's one of those guys where he's he's in that tweener kind of size for a defensive interior. He's 6'2", 305, uh, but he's 27 years old. He is a undrafted free agent. Um, who's been in the league for four years, and he kind of has shown us that in spurts and in different um, packages that he can be effective uh, in the run stop and in the pass rush. This seems like more like a Robert Sala guy because he has a lot of pass rush moves, and he would be possibly good depth. Ultimately, my goal is I don't want Nathan Shepard or... Uh, Sheldon Rankins on this team and I want to find replacements of guys that I haven't seen playing in these positions that have some upside and that can play those positions. Now, the other player that's a defensive interior is um, most recently with uh, Pittsburgh and that is Montrevious Adams. He is 6'4", 304, and this seems to be one of those, hey, this is a pass rush specialist. This guy fits right in line with what uh, New England uh, was doing when they had, um, uh, not New England, why did I say New England? Right in line with what uh, Robert Sala wants to do when he was, uh, he played with New Orleans and Pittsburgh last year. That's what I was trying to say. But we know that Pittsburgh has a lot of depth on the interior of the uh, defensive line. This is a player that might get cut just because of a crowded room. And with a lot of pass rush moves and our scheme and what we like to do, it might be another guy that we can bring in. Again, he's younger than Sheldon Rankins and Nathan Shepard's at 27 years old. He's a former third round pick by the Green Bay Packers. He's a guy that I would be willing to say, hey, maybe he might be a better pickup, but there's not much there. And then the last player that we're going to talk about before we wrap this up is safety. And it's a safety that a lot of players wanted us to, a lot of fans, I'm sorry, wanted us to sign in free agency. And that's safety, Jaquiski Tart. Formerly with the San Francisco 49ers, currently with the Philadelphia Eagles, uh, Jaquiski Tart was signed to uh, kind of be a one-year deal, stopgap, hey, we need to fix this safety room in Philly kind of immediately. But Jaquiski Tart hasn't been really able to win the job in Philly. And with players like uh, Marcus Epps um, kind of beating him out for the job, and then you've got Anthony Harris slated to start in front of him, Jaquiski Tart might be a player that's on the outside looking in. And because of his age, Philly might decide that going with youth over age makes a lot of sense. If the Jets are in kind of a win-now mode and we don't believe in LaMarcus Joyner, which a lot of fans don't, I don't, and we don't believe that Ashton Davis, Will Parks, or Jason Pinnock are the answers there, and we would rather get rid of one of those guys as well and bring in an outside name... Jaquiski Tart, I think, fits the bill there kind of really, really well. He played free safety almost exclusively when he was in San Francisco. Uh, he started there um, every single game, all 17 games when he was there. When he was last with Robert Sala, um, you know, he graded really, really well in coverage and coming downhill and tackling. And so it's a guy where you go, maybe... 
Jaquiski Tart can be the answer. A one-year stopgap at safety while we build up that room through Will Parks, Jason Pinnock, and Ashton Davis. Let me know if there's any other players that you guys think are on the outs on other rosters. Who should we be targeting? Should we not be targeting anyone and just keeping the guys to ourselves and our guys that we've built this roster with? Let me know in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys think. And last but not least, go Jets.